Good morning and welcome, and welcome to those who will join us from home, either now or later in the day. Uh, today we, as is our custom at this service, we uh, anticipate Sunday, which is the first Sunday of Advent, and the lessons you'll find on page 47 of the prayer book. Let us pray. Our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive them that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Almighty God, unto whom all hearts be open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of thy Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love thee and worthily magnify thy holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ said here, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord, and thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul, with all thy mind and with all thy strength. This is the first commandment, and the second is like, namely this. Thou shalt love thy neighbour as thyself. There is none other commandment greater than these. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Lord, have mercy upon us, and write all these thy laws in our hearts, we beseech thee. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, we are taught by thy holy word that the hearts of kings are in thy rule and governance, and that thou dost dispose and turn them as it seemeth best to thy godly wisdom. We humbly beseech thee so to dispose and govern the heart of Charles, thy servant, our king and governor, that in all his thoughts, words and works, he may ever seek thy honour and glory, and study to preserve thy people committed to his charge in wealth peace and godliness. Grant this, O merciful Father, for thy dear Son's sake, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, give us grace that we may cast away the works of darkness and put upon us the armour of light. Now, in the time of this mortal life, in which thy Son, Jesus Christ, came to visit us in great humility, that in the last day, when he shall come again in his glorious majesty to judge both the quick and the dead, we may rise to the life immortal, through him who liveth and reigneth with thee and the Holy Ghost, now and ever. Amen. The epistle is taken from the epistle of Paul to the Romans. Owe no man anything but to love one another, for he that loveth another has fulfilled the law. For this thou shalt not commit adultery, thou shalt not kill, thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not bear false witness, thou shalt not covet. And if there be any other commandment, it is briefly comprehended in this saying, namely, thou shalt love thy neighbour as thyself. Love worketh no ill to his neighbour, therefore love is the fulfilling of the law. And that, knowing the time that now it is high time to awake out of sleep, for now is our salvation nearer than when we believed. The night is far spent, the day is at hand. Let us therefore cast off the works of darkness and let us put on the armour of light. Let us walk honestly as in the day, not in rioting and drunkenness, not in chambering and wantonness, but in strife and envying. But put ye on the Lord Jesus Christ and make not provision for the flesh to fulfil the lust thereof. Here endeth the epistle. Mm. 
The Lord be with you. The Holy Gospel is written in the 21st chapter of that according to St. Matthew, beginning at the first verse. Glory be to thee, O Lord. When they drew nigh unto Jerusalem and were come to Bethphage, unto the Mount of Olives, then sent Jesus two disciples, saying unto them, Go into the village over against you, and straightway ye shall find an ass tied and a colt with her. Loose them and bring them unto me. And if any man say aught unto you, ye shall say, The Lord hath need of them, and straightway he will send them. All this was done that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by the prophet, saying, Tell ye the daughter of Zion, Behold, thy king cometh unto thee, meek and sitting upon an ass, and the colt a foal of an ass. And the disciples went and did as Jesus commanded them, and brought the ass and the colt and put their clothes and set them thereon. And a very great multitude spread their garments in the way. Others cut down branches from the trees and strawed them in the way. And the multitude that went before and that followed cried, saying, Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. And when he was come into Jerusalem, all the city was moved, saying, Who is this? And the multitude said, This is Jesus, the prophet of Nazareth of Galilee. And Jesus went into the temple and cast out all them that sold and bought in the temple and overthrew the tables of the money changers and the seats of them that sold doves and said unto them, It is written, My house shall be called the house of prayer, but ye have made it a den of thieves. Praise be to thee, O Christ. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven, and was incarnate the Holy Ghost of the Virgin Mary, and was made man, and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried, and the third day he came according to the Scriptures, and ascended into heaven, and sitteth on the right hand of the Father, and he shall come again with glory to judge both the quick and the dead, whose kingdom shall have no end. And I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Lord and giver of life, who proceedeth from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spake by the prophets. And I believe one holy, Catholic and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. As we approach Advent, and as we prepare for this wonderful, hope-filled, an exciting season, we, or at least I, wonder how on earth the compilers of the lectionary decided what lessons they would choose. As we begin to look forward to Christmas, today's gospel seems to be a bit anachronistic. At the start of the new church year, the lectionary takes us to the end instead of the beginning. The passage we read seems to belong to the week before Easter, rather than today. It's a Palm Sunday Gospel. 
Jesus makes his triumphant entry into Jerusalem. Holy Week begins, and soon his suffering and death are at hand. The crowds welcome him as the son of David. But within a few days, they turn on him and shout instead, Crucify! So what are we doing now as we approach the beginning of Advent, reading about Palm Sunday? Is this like Christmas in April? Only backwards. What is our lectionary thinking about beginning the church year with Jesus' donkey ride into Jerusalem? Perhaps we might start by reviewing just what Advent means. In a word, it means coming. Jesus is coming. Jesus is coming as a baby in Bethlehem. That's Christmas. He's also coming again in glory to judge the quick and the dead. That's his second coming. So Jesus is coming and that's what we consider and meditate upon as we approach Advent. And in his coming into Jerusalem, he's coming to do what he came to do, to suffer and to die and to save. So perhaps after all it does begin to make some sense that be, the Advent begins with a very important beginning. The triumphal arrival of Christ to his people in his city marks the triumphal arrival of the church year. And so Advent begins in this way. But when he comes, it's not always how we hope or the way we expect, because God is full of surprises. But his word is always fulfilled sooner or later, according to his will. So what does it mean for us today as 21st century Anglicans, standing at the turn of another church year, harvest Thanksgiving behind us and Christmas just around the corner, well, it means everything. For our problems and all the problems of the world, the war in Ukraine, global warming, the cost of living crisis, and all the other problems that we face come from sin, even if that is not a terribly fashionable concept these days. Jesus comes to deal with sin our struggles and our hardships, our sorrows and our pains, all the results of being a sinner in a sinful world. But we go on because we must understand just what it is that sin means. It comes from an Aramaic verb, which is an archery term. Now, the Hebrews were great archers, and they practiced a lot. They shot off at targets. And if they missed the target, or if they fell short, the verb was they had sinned. To sin is to miss the target, or to fall short. And if we understand that, we can begin to understand how it is that we are all sinners in a sinful world, for our target is perfection. And we always fall short of that. We miss the target. So we are sinners, not indescribably evil, but ordinary, flawed, less than perfect human beings. The human beings Jesus came to make perfect in him. An honest look at our own lives would show us the mess that needs to be cleaned up, the scale that, of the task that Jesus took on. It's a bit like when guests are coming and the house is a bit of a wreck. You do what you can to pick everything up, put it away, vacuum and dust and polish and make things look nice for the expected company. But imagine someone just empties several black bags of rubbish in your sitting room, perhaps the grandchildren have visited, or you have only minutes to clean the place before the guests arrive. And the chief guest that's coming isn't just family or friends, it is the king. 
How on earth can you hope to be ready? How will you be prepared for his coming? Well, you can't be. But the good news, the good news is that Jesus does all the hard work for us. He gets on with the housework. He prepares us. He prepares our hearts and our minds and our spirit. He comes to us for that very reason. He comes to make us ready for his coming. He comes to us today. Jesus comes to his people not only as a baby in Bethlehem at Christmas, not only as the donkey-riding son of David, not only as a glorious, omnipotent king, he also comes to us today. He comes in his word of forgiveness. He comes in the bread and the wine that are his body and his blood. He comes to us in the reading of scripture. He comes to us in our prayers. He is present working his salvation. Faith comes by hearing, by hearing the word of God. He also comes in our encounters with other people in our ordinary lives as much as in our church lives, in the corner shop as much as in the church. He promised he would come, and he does. And with that promise, as we receive him into our lives, we receive his forgiveness and life and salvation. And it is these humble ways of word and sacrament and everyday life and other people that he comes to prepare us for his glorious and final coming. As he comes to us sinners, let us prepare to receive him who came and lived and died for us, who comes to us and forgives us and will come again to make us perfect and bring us to glory with himself. So Advent is a time of hope. It's a time of excited expectation as we look for the coming of Jesus into our lives afresh today. So let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. this water is mingled with this wine, so Christ shared our humanity. May we so share the life of his divinity. Wash me truly from my sins, O Lord, and cleanse me from all iniquity. Let us pray for the whole state of Christ's church, militant here in earth. Almighty and ever-living God, 
who by thy holy apostle has taught us to make prayers and supplications and to give thanks for all men. We humbly beseech thee most mercifully to receive these our prayers which we offer unto thy divine majesty, beseeching thee to inspire continually the universal church with the spirit of truth, unity and concord. And grant that all they that to confess thy holy name may agree in the truth of thy holy word and live in unity and godly love. We beseech thee also to save all Christian kings, princes and governors, especially thy servant Charles, our king, that under him we may be godly and quietly governed. And grant unto his whole council and to all that are put in authority under him that they may truly and indifferently minister justice to the punishment of wickedness and vice and to the maintenance of thy true religion and virtue. Give grace, O heavenly fathers, all bishops and curates, that they may both by their life and doctrine set forth thy true and lively word and rightly and duly administer thy holy sacraments. And to all thy people give thy heavenly grace, especially to this congregation here present, that with meek heart and due reverence they may hear and receive thy holy word, truly serving thee in holiness and righteousness all the days of their life. And we most humbly beseech thee of thy goodness, O Lord, to come and succour all them who in this transitory life are in trouble, sorrow, need, sickness, or any other adversity. And we also bless thy holy name for all thy servants departed this life in thy faith and fear, beseeching thee to give us grace so to follow their good examples that with them we may be partakers of thy heavenly kingdom. Grant this, O Father, for Jesus Christ's sake, our only mediator and advocate. Amen. Ye that are truly and earnestly repent with your sins and are in love and charity with your neighbours and intend to lead a new life following the commandments of God and walking from henceforth in his holy ways, draw near with faith and take this holy sacrament to your comfort and make your humble confession to Almighty God. Almighty God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, maker of all things, judge of all men, we acknowledge and bewail our manifold sins and wickedness, which we from time to time most grievously have committed by thought, word and deed against thy divine majesty, provoking most justly thy wrath and indignation against us. We do earnestly repent and are heartily sorry for these our misdoings. The remembrance of them is grievous unto us, the burden of them is intolerable. Have mercy upon us, have mercy upon us, most merciful Father. For thy Son, our Lord Jesus Christ's sake, forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may ever hereafter serve and please thee in newness of life, to the honour and glory of thy name, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who of his great mercy hath promised forgiveness of sins to all them that with hearty repentance and true faith turn unto him, have mercy upon you. Pardon and deliver you from all your sin. Confirm and strengthen you in all goodness and bring you to everlasting life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Hear what comfortable words our Saviour Christ saith unto all that truly turn to him. Come unto me, all that travail and are heavy laden, and I will refresh you. So God loved the world, that he gave his only begotten Son, to the end that all that believe in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Hear also what St Paul saith, This is a true saying, and worthy of all men to be received, that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. Hear also what St. John saith. If any man sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous, and he is the propitiation for our sins. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. 
Let us give thanks unto our Lord God. It is very meet, right, and our bounden duty that we should at all times and in all places give thanks unto thee, O Lord, Holy Father, almighty, everlasting God. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify thy glorious name, evermore praising thee and saying, Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of thy glory. Glory be to thee, O Lord Most High. Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. We do not presume to come to this thy table, O merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in thy manifold and great mercy. We are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under thy table, but thou art the same Lord, whose property is always to have mercy. Grant us therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of thy dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood that our sinful bodies may be made clean by his body and our souls washed through his most precious blood and that we may evermore dwell in him and he in us. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who of thy tender mercy didst give thine only Son, Jesus Christ, to suffer death upon the cross for our redemption who made there by his one oblation of himself once offered a full, perfect and sufficient sacrifice, oblation and satisfaction for the sins of the whole world, and did institute and in his holy gospel command us to continue a perpetual memory of that his precious death until his coming again. Hear us, O merciful Father, we most humbly beseech thee, and grant that we receiving these thy creatures of bread and wine, according to thy Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ's holy institution, in remembrance of his death and passion, may be partakers of his most blessed body and blood. Who in the same night that he was betrayed took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, after supper, he took the cup. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink ye all of this. For this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for you and for many for the remission of sins. Do this as oft as ye shall drink it, in remembrance of me. Wherefore, O Lord and Heavenly Father, We, thy humble servants, entirely desire thy fatherly goodness, mercifully to accept this our sacrifice with praise and thanksgiving, most humbly beseeching thee to grant that by the merits and death of thy Son, Jesus Christ, and through faith in his blood, we and all thy whole church may obtain remission of our sins and all other benefits of his passion. And here we offer and present unto thee, O Lord, our souls, our souls and bodies, to be a reasonable, holy and lively sacrifice unto thee, Humbly beseeching thee that all we who are partakers of this Holy Communion may be fulfilled with thy grace and heavenly benediction. And although we be unworthy through our manifold sins to offer unto thee any sacrifice, yet we beseech thee to accept this our bounden duty and service, not weighing our merits, but pardoning our offences, through Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom and with whom, in the unity of the Holy Ghost, All honour and glory be unto thee, O Father Almighty, world without end. Amen. (laughs) 
as our Saviour Christ hath commanded and taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive them that trespass against us. And lead us not in temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. O Lamb of God, that takest away the sins of the world, have mercy upon us. O Lamb of God, that takest away the sins of the world, have mercy upon us. O Lamb of God, that takest away the sins of the world, grant us thy peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him that takest away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word, and I shall be healed. So draw near with faith. Receive the body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which he gave for you, and his blood, which he shed for you. Eat and drink in remembrance that Christ died and lives for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. The body and blood of Christ. Body of Christ, the blood of Christ. The body. The body of Christ. 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 body of Christ. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. body of Christ. The body of Christ.
almighty and ever-living God, we most heartily thank thee for that thou dost vouchsafe to feed us who have duly received these holy mysteries with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of thy Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. And dost assure us thereby of thy favour and goodness towards us, and that we are very members incorporate in the mystical body of thy Son, which is the blessed company of all faithful people, and are also heirs through hope of thy everlasting kingdom, by the merits of the most precious death and passion of thy dear Son. And we most humbly beseech thee, O Heavenly Father, so to assist us with thy grace, that we may continue in that holy fellowship and all such good works as thou hast prepared for us to walk in. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with thee and the Holy Ghost be all honour and glory, world without end. Amen. Glory be to God on high, and in earth peace, goodwill towards men. We praise thee, we bless thee, we worship thee, we glorify thee. We give thanks to thee for thy great glory, O Lord God, heavenly King, God the Father Almighty. O Lord, the only begotten Son, Jesus Christ. O Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, that takest away the sins of the world, have mercy upon us. Thou that takest away the sins of the world, have mercy upon us. Thou that takest away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. Thou that sittest at the right hand of God the Father, have mercy upon us. For thou only art holy, thou only art the Lord. Thou only, O Christ, with the Holy Ghost, art most high in the glory of God the Father. Amen. The peace of God which passeth all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Ghost be amongst you and remain with you always. Amen.